Hi folks, welcome back to East Tennessee. Leslie here. Um, I really wanted to do a lot of things today. Well, last night I wanted to do a video with Juliana, but bless her heart, she played so hard she fell asleep before we got to do the video. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll get that done. <clears throat> but today what I wanted to do was um, go out to Grace Point and uh, hike in the woods and set up my hammock and show you some of my modifications there and uh, look for some fat wood and um, put up my new tarp and finish up a little firebox stove knockoff and show that to you as well as an alcohol stove or two or three that I've been working on and use some of uh, uh, Bonnie Caves and uh, Diane Bone Steel and um, Cabot Bluegills tinder and fire starters and things like that and experiment with that and it's you know in the mid 30s and I am just getting over a cold and I finally said no no Leslie you really need to stay inside where it's warm it's really tough I tell you being um, ADHD, OCD, because uh, you can't decide what to do next. So I thought I'd show you some of the things I'm working on. And uh, one of the things I was going to finish before I went on my hike, another thing that I was going to finish before I went on my hike, and uh, let's see, another thing I was going to finish before I went on my hike, and another thing that I was going to finish before I went on my hike, which, you know, the day's only so long. So, since I've missed uh, way too much work lately from this nasty cold and laryngitis, I decided I'd just stay in. And we'll look at a couple of things. One of them, I think is going to be really neat. It looks really rough at this point. I'll show you what I'm doing. Now, you know how taken I am right now with, um, with let's see, is that going to focus? Come on, camera. Hmm. Not sure. I may have to come closer. All right, hang on. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit. Hold on. Now, let's see how this is going to work. It's my chair. my work spot. We'll see how that does. I think that might just do it. Let's see. Okay. This small room, bless its heart. And of course Sunday's here. You can see your ears right there. So this small room ends up being uh, it's our spare room and uh, we end up doing a lot of different things in here um, right here is my sewing machine I finally bought an inexpensive heavy-duty sewing machine got it on it's just a very very basic model um, don't know how sturdy it's gonna be got it on Amazon uh, Prime free shipping and uh, so I've got that in here so I can do some sewing in here on this table I've got a little bench pin here for doing uh, a little bit of metal work that sort of thing and I've got all my tarp stuff here and got a computer behind me and that walls full of books and that walls full of Mary Margaret sewing and desk and things like that but uh, so anyway I ramble what I want to show you is um, an idea that I really like. Now, the more I look at what I want to do with my, um, let's see, is that focused? I can't tell. I think so. What I want to do with my uh, hammock is get it as light as I can. And uh, for one thing, you know, I'm a little old lady and I don't want to carry 35 pounds into the woods with me. 
I'm not going to be hiking far, but I still don't want to carry 35 pounds into the woods with me. And already, because I want my comforts, you know, I've got a tarp here, a giant tarp that I have made. And this turned out really well, people. I put a um, rolled hem on the edge of it using my little rolled hem foot. And it's got way, way, way many grow grain ribbon tie-outs on it. I still plan to put four more. Originally, I had like 40 on it on my 10 by 12 tarp. And I thought, you know, you could probably cut those in half. So I did. And... Uh, so I've got that done. Now the next thing I need to do, other than not having it rolled into a wad here, but the next thing I need to do with it is I'm going to make a bag for it. Now the bag is going to be made of uh, one of these um, Dollar Tree one dollar little bags that I get. You know, little drawstring bags. You've seen those before. But I have discovered that at times, now it's pretty sturdy, and I've checked it is actually not just plastic, it is a woven material, so it should hold up fairly well. Now what I did was um, look at it and realize that the seams tend to come out, so I am restitching them, and this one pretty much is going to take most of it to make a um, bag for my tarp and my tarp stuff. Now, I do want to put some lightweight stakes in, so what I think I'm going to do is I will take, after I have reinforced all the seams, fold over a bit, stitch it most of the way up, so when I turn it inside out, I've got a little pocket. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that, and uh, that should do it. Now, I'll put this drawstring back in, and that should make a pretty decent little bag for my tarp. All right, the other thing, big tarp, the other thing I want to do, the other thing I want to do is finish up my little tiny tarp to go in my get home bag, and I've already got all the edges roll hems on it. It is about five by eight, just was a remnant, this fabric is so light. And uh, I'll get that finished, get the tie-outs on it, so that I can get it in there. But this is a cool thing I've made. Um, you've seen the big yellow hammock that I made for myself. This is the bag that I have made, again, out of one of these. You can see how, I don't know if you can see or not, you can see how much I have um, reinforced the stitching. Maybe you can't now reinforce the stitching on this inside and out. I made what they call a bishop's bag. So it's got, don't look at my ugly seamstress work, okay? I'm getting better all the time. It's got a soda bottom in it, and I put a buttonhole, this is double layer, to put a buttonhole in the bottom so that the um, the continuous loop on my on my hammock is out here. Now this is just stuff I have hanging on it for the moment. Actually, I have the ring on there to keep from pulling back through the buttonhole. Um, this, that's just an extra hook. I'm going to try to get rid of almost all of uh, the metal in my hammock suspension. Um, I haven't quite convinced myself to get rid of all of it, but I'm thinking about it. So I took there's some um, part of my hammock and my whoopee slings, and more of my hammock, and more of my hammock, and more of my hammock, and one of my suspension straps, and more of my hammock, and when I'm done, when I'm done, and I hook my hammock up, the bag is still at the end of my hammock. I don't have to worry about losing this bag. It is right here hooked to the very end of my hammock, which is awesome. I like this idea. And so what I did was I took another idea uh, from Really Big Monkey One, and he lines almost all of his bags with something. Now what I did with this one is I lined it with some of this um, non-woven um, 
non-woven. I think they're supposed to be, uh, this is not an entire one, it's one I took apart. I think they're supposed to be like stuff sacks for laundry. And it's a non-woven material, but it's still pretty tough. And I figure it'll help with the abrasion on the inside of my bag and just give it a little more strength. So, weighs nothing. I'm sure it's just some kind of polyester or polyethylene or who knows what. And just lined the bag with that. So it was just easy. Turned everything inside out, sewed it together, zigzagged everything good, and uh, there we go. So that's my bishop bag that I made for my hammock. I'm really, really pleased with it. And you notice that the one for the tarp is going to be a different color, so I can grab them and know what I've got. I know this will not be good for stealth camping. <clears throat> so, all of this will just stuff back in here. And that way, when I start to hook up my hammock, I'm not going to be dragging things on the ground. It'll just come out of the bag a little at a time as I have my tree straps up and I can hook it up that way without taking a chance on tearing it on a bramble or whatever. So, I've got a ring on the other end on my, my light's not really great here, is it? On my continuous loop from the end of my hammock, got that there. I've got my one whoopee sling is already connected. The other one that goes on the other end is just going in here with everything else. The way I did my whoopee slings this time is people tend to put a bead on them to um, keep them from, you know, the loop from pulling all the way through the am steel. I decided I didn't want to do that. Instead, I just put a little mini clip on it, a little mini beaner, because I figured I'd have some kind of hook that I was going to be hooking it to. I'm really kind of sorry I did that. I got some beads, so next time I make whoopee slings, I'm actually going to put the bead on it. I've decided it's a pretty good idea. You live and you learn. Now, these are neat. These are actually like 14 foot straps with a really heavy hook on the end. And these were ratchet straps. They came from Harbor Freight. I got them for, I got four ratchet straps for, I think, $7.99 at the, um, the sidewalk sale at Harbor Freight on my birthday. And uh, they're rated, the strap is rated. It's a one inch strap. It's rated for 400 pounds. And uh, I'm thinking that they're way, way, way plenty long to have as uh, tree straps and a suspension. And I'm thinking that they'll hook around a tree pretty easily. Haven't tried them out yet. Other thing I was going to do today in my video in the woods when it was 30 degrees. So I've got two of those. And basically, since four came in the set, they cost me about, let's say, $4 for the entire set. Okay, now... These are going to be nice. Also, not for stealth camping. They go in my bishop bag also. Now, so, one thing I've been doing, and you see I've still got quite a bit of room left in here for any other bits and bobs. <clears throat> I have been using a um, um, Marlin Spike hitch for my hammock, and I like it relatively well. But, I have seen some hammock strap buckles that work instead of the toggle. They're really expensive. They're amazingly beautiful, but really expensive. Um, so, you know, I mean, rather than pay that much for little buckles, I can take um, many hours of my time and a lot of swearing and aggravation and make something similar myself. Now. The way these are normally made, they have, um, they're about mm, right at two inches wide, and they have two slots, one a bit bigger than the other. I've decided that the size slots I'm doing, I'm going to end up like on this side. This is my second buckle, okay? And on this one, I decided to go ahead and try making them both the same width. Now. Um, 
these are often made of titanium. It's light and it's super strong. But what I've done is I have this one inch um, aluminum bar that is a quarter inch thick. It's tough. Now, if you look at people who do their their hammocks with a marlin spike hitch, they'll sometimes just use a stick for the marlin spike because the actual um, your actual whoopee sling hangs on behind it on the knot on the webbing itself. So I'm figuring this quarter inch aluminum is going to be plenty, plenty, plenty sturdy for my needs. So what I have done is I have um, taken it and marked out what I wanted to do. This little hole will remain a hole. This little hole over here is going to be a slot. Of course, it's going to be cut right here uh, to make the buckle. So I'll have a little slot right here. And I'm going to do some kind of a thing where I put some shock cord through it so that I can wrap it around through a little knot and strap up my tree straps all in one bundle. That's what those two holes are for. These two holes are basically the buckle. And so what I have done is, let's see, if I got a piece of strap here that'll work. Had some earlier. I, I, this piece of ribbon may work. Stuff everywhere, boxes of stuff everywhere. So the way this works is, say, here comes your tree strap from the tree, okay? It goes through here, all right, under here, back through. These have not been filed out and smoothed yet, and then back through here, all right? Now, so what you do is you take your pink for contrast. You take your um, sorry, you can see if I can get this right, right. All right, so I will be taking, yeah, this is the way, basically, you would hang your hammock. Only this little end piece, you'd have it out. So it would be between two layers of your tree strap. All right, now, that's not going to go anywhere. However, there's usually sufficient of this to actually you know, do a couple of little half hitches or something around it, just to kind of hold everything steady and make sure this doesn't slide. Okay, so that's the neat thing. This weighs, this whole little bar weighs almost nothing. So that's not going to add any weight. So I'm hoping that only this and the, um, I guess I could have used this, couldn't I? The metal end of my tree strap those are going to be pretty much the heaviest things in the kit. And these aren't, these aren't terribly heavy. They're, they've got a heavy plastic coating. Um, the thing I need to be careful of is make sure that this is something that is not going to hurt the trees at all. You know, uh, there are places where hammockers have been banned because they've used ropes on trees and damaged them. I think this is going to work well. The only thing I might do is close this a little bit, you know, so that it's, um, going to be a little more secure no matter which way I turn this. I'll let you know how that comes out. You know, my life is an experiment. It just is. So, at any rate, so go into the tree. We go to the tree. We come through the buckle. We, do we? Is that the way we go? Yep. We go through the bottom buckle. We come back up. Nice and secure. And if we wish, we can then, you know, do some hitches on this one way or the other. Okay, we can go down. We can wrap it back around once we've got our hammock in place. And that way, if there's any worry that anything's going to slip, you got it. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I've done to make these. Um, 
not hard, just takes time. And uh, a couple of specialized tools. Um, you don't have to have the specialized tools, but I'm an old lady and I get impatient and I want to hurry. So what I did was I did some experiments. I laid out my pattern here, what I wanted to do. And then I tried, I tried to um, drill a hole at each end. I drilled all my holes, so I had basically six holes in this piece of metal. And uh, my first thought was just to take my jeweler saw. Now, everybody doesn't have one of these, but trust me, anybody who does any kind of craft work, um, now this is not great for steel, mind you, but silver, brass, bronze, um, it'll just about do magnesium. It's kind of a pain. And I have kind of a coarse saw in here. You can get extremely fine saws. You can do amazing things with a jeweler saw, and it's adjustable. And they're not horribly expensive. I don't remember. I think you can get one as cheap as $6 from, um, I get most of my jewelry stuff from Rio Grande um, out in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it's just a super thing for doing really, really fine sawing. And on this aluminum, it does beautifully. But it's a very long way for me to saw. And have I ever mentioned that I don't do straight lines well? Nope. I don't. So this is a bench pen. Now I have made my own bench pens. You can take just a piece of a hardwood. This one's got a little anvil on the back of it. It's very sweet. It's portable. It'll go anywhere. But the pen itself is just a wedge of hardwood. And uh, I have made them out of bits of maple scrap and things like that and just screwed them to my bench top downstairs. That's what I use all the time as a handmade one. This one's just portable and my goodness that is nice. And you can see it's gotten used a lot. It's all sawed up and chipped up and that kind of thing. So you use this to support your work while you saw. Okay, and I'll do a little sawing in a minute here. So I tried several things. Um, First off, I decided that this slot does not need to be made nearly as wide as I've got it. I've got it at about 3 16ths. This one's about an eighth. For the straps I'm using, that's perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm No, for the straps I'm using, the eighth inch is perfect. Um, I don't really need the 3 16ths. So what I did was I decided I would go and try to, after I sawed this one out, I decided to go down and try to just saw a straight line of holes to make this a little easier. And um, I did it with the big one and I did it with the small one. And uh, if I mentioned I can't do things in a straight line, well, they're pretty messy looking. So when I decided this one really didn't need to be this wide, I decided to try once more. And for this one, what I did was I put a little, I have a small, inexpensive tabletop drill press. And so I just dropped a, um, a carpenter speed square on the edge of the table. I discovered where I needed to have this, you know, what the distance was to the drill bit. I put in my eighth inch drill bit, even though my end holes are three sixteenths. And I managed a really decent straight line um, for this particular slot. Now it hasn't been cleaned up yet. All I've done is clean it up a little bit with my jeweler saw. And if you're not totally bored by now, I'll show you how I do that. Now, I should have some lubricant here. Anytime you're not using the saw, you let the, see how what a tiny wire that blade is? It's like a hacksaw. It only cuts in one direction, down. So what I'll do is I will start out by deciding which end I'm going to start from. Okay, I'm going to start from this end of the piece. I take this and this is where your Wonder Woman stuff comes in. You put the handle on the chest, push it in to spring it and tighten it. Now you've got a really got a really tight blade. So all you do, and you can see why this bench pen is so handy. See, I told you I needed some lubricant. I broke the blade. But then I've done all this cutting with that blade and I haven't been using any lubricant. But you can see, perhaps, that I'm almost through that spot right there. Okay? 
And so that's how I've done this. Now what I'll do is I will try to get in here with a I'll try to get in here with a file and file these flat. Now that won't be too hard because it's aluminum. And so I'll be able to get these sides flat. And once I've done that, I will um, come back in and smooth the little edge right here as well. Okay? And I've got a couple of options for doing that. I'll probably start out with just a scraper. But I'll want those, even if I have to go get a round burr on my Dremel tool, I'll make sure there is, isn't anything sharp left that's going to create a problem for my straps or for my whoopee slings. So when I get these finished, I'll show you. I'll take them out and we'll hang the hammock. All right? Now, if you're not bored to death already, let's see what else we've got here. Okay? I've made my bag, my bishop's bag. I have um, started my buckles for my hammock. They're almost done. I have got the layout for a tarp bag for my big tarp. Got my big tarp almost finished. And uh, I've been busy. Got my tree straps here figured out. They're going to be great. You know, the last thing that I would like to do, and I'm not sure yet whether or not I'm going to do it, is maybe get rid of the end rings. I know that that they're good for drip lines, but they're not absolutely the best for drip lines. Most people say a little piece of um, paracord with a prussic knot on it somewhere underneath where your, your suspension to your hammock comes underneath your tarp. Um, just a little prussic knot with a couple of little strings hanging down from it. it tends to be the best way if it's raining to keep the water from running down your suspension line and into your into your hammock. So, um, you know, this doesn't belong to it. This is not part of it. That's just there to keep from losing it. Not that I lose things, mind you. But the ring, I don't know if I'm going to leave it or not. I haven't decided what I'm going to replace it with yet. Um, once I've figured that, I may just put a little mini beaner on it. And... Uh, that I can take off or use for something else. Now I will need, that really kind of makes sense because I'm going to need probably a small strong beaner because <clears throat> I will want to put a fixed ridge line in my hammock too. I haven't done that yet, It's uh, but it's something I want to experiment with because everybody says that's the best way to do it. And you know, I'm a rookie with hammocks, so we'll go from there. So that's going to get the hammock, this hammock is amazingly light. I don't know what it, what it weighs, but there's that. Now it is cold weather, which means I'm going to need an underquilt. I'm going to need some kind of overquilt or sleeping bag. So it ends up being kind of a bulky thing. But when you figure you don't have a tent, um, you're going to have to have a tarp anyway. And you're going to have to have a sleeping bag anyway. Probably it's not that big a deal, because basically what you're mostly adding is this little bag right here. So And it's going to keep you up and keep you dry. So, that's what I've got right now. I have been um, experimenting with uh, little stoves, okay? I have, don't have one in here with me, but I've been um, looking at the Fancy Feast stoves. Um, um, BK Stott had a really nice um, demonstration on using one of those. And, let me think. I don't know. You can see, find the instructions on doing them anywhere. I experimented with a couple of things. I don't have any um, carbon felt. Some people use, um, you know, um, fiberglass fiber for the wick of them or carbon felt. Some people use um, muffler tape. I didn't have any of those. And uh, since I've been out sick, that eh, paycheck's been pretty shy. So haven't been able to buy a lot of extra things, but the things I did have were I had a plain lamp oil wick, and so I used it for one of them. I'm not sold on whether or not it's going to work well yet. It burns well, but I don't know how long it's going to last. And the other thing I wrapped my little inner can with was some really neat stuff that many of you are probably familiar with. It's called kale wool. 
and it is basically spun kaolin clay and it usually comes in a pretty thick blanket you use it for all kinds of applications where you just really have to have a fire resistant barrier when I <coughs> when I was in college we used it with just expanded metal for making these really lightweight raku kilns so we could lift the lid off you know and deal with the things we were firing and then put the lid back on but it would build up you know sufficient heat if you kept the burner going you could make that 1750 degrees piece of cake um, I've used it to make um, bean can forges with it's pretty delicate unless you put some kind of stabilizer in it anyway I digress I'm just talking about kaole now but um, uh, BP um, Fink he's a, an amazing bronze sculptor out of Woodstock, Connecticut. And BP Fink at one time uh, sent me some really thin kale wool. I mean it's about maybe an eighth of an inch thick. So I cut a strip of it and wrapped it around my inner can for my fancy feast stove. And it seems to be doing great. So I'll update you on that sometime soon. And uh, the other thing, and I got the idea from Cull Craven Bushcraft and it is for a um, a knockoff of a firebox stove. Okay, this is made out of um, 80 centipiece, um, three by three by five, three by. They are three by. This would help if I use the correct end of, I can't do that math in my head, 3 by 5 Okay, these are 3 by 5 connector plates that you would use um, in carpentry. Okay, any of Lowe's, Home Depot, hardware store is going to have these in all sorts of sizes and shapes. You can even get one that is um, taller. I think they're using one that's like 7 inches. And uh, some people like that better. I like these because they're compact. Okay, two different two different fronts, and we'll talk about the reasons for that when I get around to actually using this stove. Now, most people use some little rods to put their food on. Um, they're sturdy. Let me tell you, this thing you could stand on it. It's really sturdy. Um, I haven't finished it yet. It needs vent holes cut. It needs some little rods cut. I need to do a grill for it. And I'm toying with the idea of taking, there are, there are six of these in this. One, two, three, four, five, six. A seventh one, if you choose to use one for top feed and one for bottom feed. Because you can use this with wood. You can use it with, well, you can use it with anything. You can use it with wax. You can use it with a candle. You can use it with uh, a can of sterno. You can use it with your... Uh, little alcohol fancy feast stove. Lots of things you can do with this. And uh, I'm thinking that what I may do, I've got some metal that I can make some grating that I can make a top for it with. Some people just put wires across. But what I'm thinking is taking one of these and uh, that's not been cut up and drilling out the holes larger, maybe putting a few extra ones in and using that. I think it would do well. I mean, they're strong. They're going to be at least as strong as that wire is going to be. So that's what I think I'll do. So when I get around to finishing this up completely, we'll test it. I've got a couple of little small modifications. This one will definitely be my test stove. Um, so it's going to it's going to get. I don't want to say abused. I don't ever abuse anything. It's going to be used hard. And the nice thing about it is that. When all is said and done, now it does, this is not for an ultra, ultra light backpacker, okay? That's not what it's for. It is um, for the rest of us, okay? That's what you have. And maybe, now I've got my extra plate in here, because I haven't decided whether I like front load, top load, what I'm going to like about it, all right? Um, and I'll probably put one more with it, or you would need a few wires. To go with it or a little grate of some kind so weighs a little over a pound just barely because I've added an extra plate 
I'll weigh it when I'm all finished with okay. it. It's a little over a pound and I'm going to drill a hole through so it's held on a beaner. I'm going to put it in a little cover. I'll probably put a buttonhole through the corner of the cover so that the beaner can go through the buttonhole and through the stove. Everything will be there. I'll make sure all these rough edges are taken care of. I think it's going to be a neat thing. So stay with me on this. I know today's video has been a huge ramble. I really wanted to spend it in the woods. But now the dog is crying to go out. If it's not Sunday, it's Daisy. At least Briar goes off and just takes a nap. You want to go out, Days? Do you? Yeah, she says yes. And before she knocks over my camera to get to me, I'll say goodbye. Thank you for your patience today. I just had to make a video. And uh, so I thought I'd show you the kind of things I'm doing. And I'll even twist around and let you see if I can let you see my sewing machine. Can you see that? Yep. So anyway, thank you for coming in. Thank you for your patience. I've got a couple of cups of coffee to drink and a dog to empty. So I'll see you later. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. Thank all of you. I know I, I shouted out a number of different people today and I will try to put some links. If you want to make one of these, come here Daisy. If you want to make one of these, I suggest that you go out and uh, look at um, Cole Craven Bushcraft's demonstration on this. He shows it to you pretty clearly. But if you want the total layout and how to build it and the demonstration on building it, look for Sir Tinkerist. I will put that link down also. And uh, again, so many things. I've gotten so many ideas from so many people. And, uh, it, you know, and I really appreciate really big monkey ones bravery in making bags because I have been brave enough to learn to do it now. Thank you. Have a great day. I've got to take the dog out. Okay, Daisy, let's go.